My name is Kevin Sloan and I'm the SUSI Defence Business Development Director for the UK and Asia Pacific. SUSI have a number of business sectors all working with composite rubber track solutions. So they have agriculture, industry, winter sports and defence. And it's defence why we're here at DSCI. The Warrior vehicle, this is the mortar variant which was borrowed from RBSL. And the reason we've chosen this vehicle was we did a 5,000 kilometre trial on this platform uh, with our composite rubber track. We did that with the British Army in order that they could have a look at our capability and understand whether it would be right for British Army platforms. We're working all over the world at the moment, from the US all the way through Europe and into Asia. We've been working with AS21 Redback from Hamwa on the Commonwealth in Australia. Steel tracks suffer from vibration and noise and have a very high logistic need. Whereas a composite rubber track is very quiet, very silent, has much reduced vibration signature and noise signature. The system itself will last for a total of 5,000 kilometers and the soldier would have to just make sure the track tension is correct and the vehicle will run on without any maintenance whatsoever. So we've worked with a number of tensioners and we've partnered with horsemen as well. The tensioner we have on the system behind us is is a grease collapsible tensioner. But we have been working with other systems where the tensioner can be controlled from the cockpit. That means that the driver can adjust the track tension as the terrain changes and as the suspension system rises or falls. We've recently signed a memorandum of understanding with Hamad Defence and we've been working with them on a number of platforms. The K9 itself is one of our heavier platforms, but we have a system all the way up to 55 metric tons. So we can offer the K9 either in Australia as the AS9 or the K9 here in the UK, which is the mobile fires protection offer, um, a composite rubber track which would equip that platform. The track system is engineered in such a way to get rid of debris and debris ingestion. If that debris ingestion does happen, then the collapsible tensioner will allow the track to take up that movement and then reassert itself afterwards. From a blast perspective, you know, the SUSI tracks will take a Stanag Level 3 blast, that's eight kilograms of TNT underneath the track, and it will survive that. A jet may go through the track, um, or a cookie chunk may come off the track, but it would survive and that vehicle would still be able to drive on. Stanag Level 4 would blow the track, um, and you would have a split. But at a Stanag Level 4 blast, you wouldn't have a suspension left, and that vehicle would be recovered anyway. So it's a mute point on whether you know, you'd have to change that track in the field at a Stanag Level 4 blast. There's a lot more protection on a composite rubber track than a steel track. There's no secondary blast effect. So if you're working with an IFV, soldiers are beside the vehicle, they wouldn't have that metal fragmentation coming towards them. I do believe there is a place at this moment in time for steel track on heavier platforms, but I think anything that has a composite rubber track availability should switch. Vibration is is very present on armoured platforms. People are more aware of what vibration and harm can do to the human. There's very little logistics on a composite rubber track that needs to be maintained and, and transported with the vehicle. So when you have a vehicle that's moving 5,000 kilometres or even 2,000 kilometres, there's a huge logistic tail when it comes to steel. Composite rubber track has a very, very reduced logistic footprint.